As we hurtle headlong into the digital age, pause to ponder just how far we've come. The 80s generation had no dot com, no digital. The future they imagined has been transformed by a technology revolution. My, how we've changed. Welcome to a short history of the modern world, charting the good and bad of a quarter century of innovation. This is Stop Rewind. Gadget. According to the dictionary, it's a mechanical device or tool. Well, it is that, but it's also a whole lot more. On this episode, we'll take a look back at three decades of gadgets. And not just the walkie-talkie watches and other little gizmos. This program is going to celebrate all kinds of creations. The big, the bad, and the totally stupid. Let's start off in the land of the wacky gadget, Japan. With Kenji Kawakami, the master of Chindogu. That's the Japanese art of useless, well, almost useless, inventions. Like the chopsticks with fan for cooling off your noodles. The multi-spectacle headset. And the golf club umbrella. All marvellous, near-useless gadgets. Now, let's upsize that gadget mindset with some big boys toys. One of the easiest ways to make a gadget is make one thing do something else. Say, a tractor that becomes a bug. This was the Ponson. But it wasn't quite a tractor, not really a car, and only kind of a boat. So in all honesty, it was a bit of a gadget. And a whole ton of fun. But really, a gadget. Take it away, guys. Which is why you don't see too many of them around these days. And if you don't think that's gadgety enough, how about a boat that turns into a submarine? Like this English sub skimmer from the 1980s. Yeah, it's cool, provided you're an 80 SEAL. In fact, special operations ended up being the target market for this particular invention. Now, if you wanted a vehicle that could do two very different things and impress every kid on the block back in 1987, then you needed this. A hovercraft. Yep, the ultimate go-anywhere gadget. There's been limited commercial use for them since they were invented in the 1950s. But mainly these things, like all true gadgets, lack universal appeal. Even as an amusement park ride, they can hardly compare with the roller coaster. In fact, their tricky controls mean they're not really freeway friendly. Gadgets, though, are a lot like fashion. In for one season, out again the next. Hmm. Fashion and gadgets. They had to meet sooner or later. And this was the result. A computerised catwalk from 1994, so people could enjoy virtual fashion shows. Which is pretty high-tech for back in the day. But it didn't quite improve on what was already there. You see, real-life models are pretty much fine just as they are. At least, most people think so, which is kind of why these virtual versions never really took off as pin-ups. If you really want a wacky gadget, though, 
something guaranteed to drain the bank balance and graze the knees, then check out this two-piece bike from back in 1990. Thankfully, this bonsai bisected bike never went into production. But there is a tiny war that every inventor fights to create the perfect mousetrap, where the battle cry is get rich quick. And the hero who builds that trap will have the world be a path to their door. I wouldn't like to put a, a financial figure to it. It would run into millions and millions of pounds. He is, of course, talking about the annual turnover of the pest control industry. And there's plenty of inventions looking for a slice of that pie. Like the mousetrap that hid the captured rodent. It works, but the world hasn't quite beaten the path to this particular inventor's door. Maybe you could try inventing something to keep your partner smiling. Like an electric toothbrush. Or the duo dent. Two brushes, twice the clean, half the time. Just like the mousetrap, catwalk computer, or the tractor boat car thing, this invention hasn't quite gone mainstream. That didn't stop inventors, entrepreneurs, and hustlers trying to reinvent. Take the watch. In the 80s, they added on calculators, planners, radios, and a heap of other gadgets, like a walkie-talkie watch. Agent 1-3 reporting. Suspect followed to 21 Club. Maintain surveillance. Perfect for playing Dick Tracy. But the mobile phone hung up this idea. That's not the end of James Bond-type gadgetry, though. You could keep pretending you were a super sleuth with these spy glasses. Little do those people know, but not only am I watching them, but they are being recorded on videotape. And the camera is in the specs. The perfect present for that buddy in the CIA. We've had approaches from several countries uh, from their security people. OK, all these gadgets did have a pretty limited shelf life. Here's one that's probably sitting in the back of your cupboard. In 1980, Professor Erno Rubik teased and tormented the world with his accursed cube. Eight years and $10 million development later, he did it all again with his Rubik's magic. Eight panels, three interlocking rings. Like the cube, the world was divided into the doers and the triers. For those in a really desperate situation, there's going to be an emergency hotline to call. As of 2009, the Rubik's magic world record was just 0.77 seconds. But all the science in the world doesn't need an Einstein to use it. This was the Aerobi, a new type of flying toy which took the United States by storm. It had the two things every good gadget needs, simplicity and fun. The secret was in the flexible rubber rim, which meant both the leading edge and the trailing edge worked together to provide sophisticated aerodynamics. And the next generation of Frisbee physics produced this, the Exilo. The body of the Exilo was a continuous looped surface. The spinning gyro tended to force the nose upwards, while gravity tended to pull it down. So nature and science compromised and it flies. <laughs> Now, in true gadget style, take that spinning, fun idea, upsize it, then throw your best friend inside it and spin them into insanity. This was the Bullet, a nautical gadget from Australia created back in 1995. It was the most fun you could have with your swimsuit on. We did it! It was great! It was unbelievable! <laughs>
What a ride. It's an amazing sensation. You're just spinning and then suddenly your head's on the roof and you don't know which way's up. Absolutely amazing. When it comes to gadgets, nothing quite captures our imagination as well as the electronic variety. This was 1986, when the Cell All Mobile Phone was still novel enough to be classified as a gadget, and a pretty big gadget. You see, that's no ordinary briefcase he's carrying. Very nifty, very practical. Just think, with this, what's basically a portable office, you could work from the beach or from your favourite eatery. Hi. In 1995, a Japanese law that made semi-transparent garbage bags compulsory was causing a small problem with ladies' delicates. It appears a lot of Japanese women are now refusing to throw away their old underwear in case the garbage man sees it in the bag. Apparently they won't even wrap them up in case an animal tears open the bag and drags their old garments across the street. Hmm, panty paranoia. Fortunately, the problem was solved. Or rather, dissolved. Place unwanted unmentionables in a bowl and add hot water. The key ingredient was a synthetic filament called Solvron, which dissolves in water. It wasn't a full debriefing, but after a minute, the problem had dematerialised. Last week's knickers were this week's recycling. On the topic of Japan and taking out the trash, tough guy style, we bring you this, the reusable karate ball. Okay, it doesn't quite have the same marketing impact as some other inventions, but that's why it's a gadget. Sore feet after all those karate kicks? Try inner soles filled with water. Cushions your feet and keeps them cool. Well, they didn't feel too bad. The only problem is, I'm a little prone to seasickness. And ladies need a new outfit in a hurry? Then you need a magic mirror. Cute. Ugh. It was all done with mirrors. Smart. Plus a little help from a projector. Casual. Hey boy, hey boy, hey boy. Hey boy, hey boy. And here's some tech hey to keep you safe. An electronic watchdog that barked when it detected intruders. No feeding required, minimal vet bills, and perfectly trained. Unfortunately, its bark was worse than its mega bite. Though pretty soon, we had programmable pets designed to keep us company. Like this computerized kitten. But behind that blank facade, there's a sensitive pussy. You just have to hit the right button. Seven years later, the glassy expression was still there, but they'd multiplied. They were a practical solution to crowded cities and medical studies have shown that owning a pet, real or electronic, can be therapeutic. And what's not to like about a dog that doesn't need obedience training or a cat that doesn't need a litter tray? her under the chin and she purrs. Sounds more like a small tractor starting up. If you're the more traditional pet owner, there were plenty of ways to satisfy your gadget craving. Come on. Like these canine sunglasses. They're just too doggone cool. Okay, corny joke. But these goggles were prescribed by some vets for dogs whose eyes suffered under bright sunlight. Of course, just because something's a gadget doesn't mean it's a gimmick. Strictly speaking, the first wheel was a gadget, but now we couldn't survive without them. Some clever people thought we'd only ever need a handful of computers in the entire world. Mobile phones, as you saw before, were once the size of bricks, 
and almost exclusively reserved for big wigs. So, let's do a quick parade of groundbreaking gadgets that either took off, <laughs> made a difference, right to the end of this street, or even saved lives. This is for real, an avalanche. Hundreds of metres across, it can bury a skier in seconds. But with this device, the ski rescue can track down an electronic signal embedded in a skier's boot, allowing for location and rescue of the buried skier. No joke about it, this gadget did help mankind. And similar avalanche trackers are still sold today. Oriel Drive, facing northeast. And praise be to the genius who first gave a voice to our car's onboard navigation systems. It's a hard left. That mutant hybrid of mother in law meets backseat driver, which we can't really live without these days. Now you're on Commercial Avenue. Which you probably know better now as the good old GPS. Here's the turn. Do it now. Keep going for a while, then you'll be at your destination. Then there's the lateral thinkers who came up with the personal fire escape. Light enough to fit in your suitcase. It had enough high tensile steel cable inside this cassette to lower you down from 12 floors up. for the person who took the safety idea up a notch, about 12,000 feet to be exact. This was the Cypress Emergency Parachute. It was a system that guaranteed a clean and safe opening on your reserve chute by having a bullet-like projectile cut the line on a twisted main chute. <laughs> if uh, all else fails, uh, the Cypress is gonna save your life. Did it work? Well, with 65,000 of these devices sold worldwide, they've achieved the goal of every great gadget. They're now considered simply a good piece of equipment. Oh, the feeling of... Oh, and just being through that really cool air at the top is just... Oh, really hard to describe. Yeah, oh, she had this helmet. My legs are pretty weak, I must admit. Here's a tent that pitches itself in just two seconds. It gets a gold star. But when it comes to gadgets, the really memorable ones are the ones, well, that we don't remember. The gizmos, flights of fancy that could have, should have, but never did make it into the Gadget Hall of Fame. First, warm yourself by the comforting crackle of the video fireplace. The plot's a bit weak and the characters need some development, but it's a heartwarming story all the same. And then there was this mysterious machine from a Scottish garage created by Sandy Kidd. It was the levitating gyroscope that supposedly defied the laws of physics to float upwards. Every action requires an equal and opposite reaction and Sandy is doing a bit of magic to try and get an action without a reaction. Even the experts were stumped on this one. At the moment it's a mystery which I find is intriguing and I don't know what to believe. But skeptics now believe that the levitation occurred due to vibrations acting on the supporting cable. Then there was the exploding instant yacht gadget. It used dynamite to create a smooth hull shape. You just lined the mould with aluminium, added some explosives, filled it with water, then... And the force of the explosion in the water moulded the aluminium into the right shape for the hull. As a manufacturing gadget, it passes its most stringent test 
by being something that really works. If your yacht sinks, you can use this gadget, the float pack, to raise it back up again. It was a compressed air system that was an emergency life vest for your boat. And quite a commendable gadget. And ladies, the gadget gurus didn't forget you. Whoever coined the phrase, beauty knows no pain, must have been wearing high heels. Turn the heel 90 degrees, make it a flexible metal strip, and you get more support with less stress on ankles, legs, and back. Brilliant. Show me a gadget inventor who wants to change the world, and I'll show you an inventor doomed to a life of frustration. But where there's a dreamer, there's a self-chilling beer can. This American idea was the fastest way to cool a beer that there is, dropping the temperature by 17 degrees centigrade in just four minutes. The base of the can absorbs the heat from the beer. And here's another idea that got canned. So the next time you reach into the cooler for another drink, take a closer look. There could be a familiar face talking back at you. And here's something so you can get out of bed invigorated. Kind of. Get out of bed. Perhaps you can take the inventor's word for it. When I wake up in the morning now, um, clocky is something for me to laugh at rather than, you know, get frustrated with. It's a clock that never stays still long enough for you to hit the snooze button. Get out of bed. Get out of bed. But if a gadget needs to be invented, then the world needs someone like Clarence Sebring. Not because he invented the Sebring three-wheeler in his backyard, but because he's the guru of gadget makers. Want some proof? Then check this out. This is my Flugerhagen. It was his magnum opus, the piece de resistance. Not quite sure what it does, though, in all seriousness. But here was a gadget that really did make something. The Clarence Sebring Pancake Maker. A weird, wonderful collection of nuts, bolts, cams, dibs, drives, wheels and cogs, which turns out a perfect pancake every single second. It's too big to be portable, and it's too cumbersome to be commercial, and way too much fun to be ignored. The greatest pancakes in the world. The pancakes are outstanding, and I'm a pancake eater. I love them, frankly. I love them. What more could any gadget inventor ask for? The knowledge that their gadget, no matter how weird it is, has changed one person's life for the better. I think it's fantastic. I've never seen it like in my life. To Clown Sebring and anyone who's dared to dream, tinker, create and present their gadget to the world, we say thank you and keep on doing what you do best. The world can never have too many gadgets. We did it. It was, it was great. Unbelievable. <laughs>